It is the first shoe ever where I've considered I feel like I need to pay resale for these. I I may do it. I may. I may not as well, but like I want these so bad that I'm will that I was thinking about being willing <laughs> to pay resell. Hey, what up and welcome to another episode of Crease Teeth and what we're going to do for a few years now we've been doing the end of year list. We do uh, the best, the worst, underrated, overrated and pickups. I'm going to do a little guesswork looking at what's come out already, what is looking to come out and we're going to try and work out Roughly, I'm going to say like top 10. I'm going to say top 10. I'm going to work a top 10. And it'll be interesting to see what what changes, what comes out, what surprises and everything. Because as I went through this, I couldn't see anything from New Balance, Asics, or Kony, Adidas. Anything that could potentially make my top 10 whether it's come out or is going to come out. We'll start off with some like really hype stuff that I feel like fizzled out real quick. And at the top of that list is the trophy room lows. I feel like there was hype around these and there is with any trophy room release, but you get the good and the bad. You get, okay, this could be cool, but are they gonna end up in the back door? You know what I mean? I do know people that were able to cop, so they weren't that crazy. Me personally, I didn't enter. I don't think I entered for these. I don't know. They weren't that appealing to me. I would have probably probably reviewed them and given an RA for someone. Like they're not that interesting to me. I feel like the the trophy room one high was really dope really well executed in terms of the shoe and then everything after that was an absolute shenanigans but yeah it, it kind of came and went and i feel like that's a theme this year things are moving i want to say quickly like we're moving on from things quickly but there isn't anything sort of taking that hype it's just Maybe in years gone by, people are like chasing their size, they're trying to get resell, whatever. None of that seems to be happening. No one seems to be care. It's like, I couldn't get that. All right, whatever. Something new will come out and I might like it. But one that's just come out over the weekend is the Travis Scott Jumpman Jacks. And look, I see people saying these are terrible. I see people saying they really like them. I, everything in between. For me, I feel like this is a horrible looking shoe. And if it didn't have Travis attached to it, you're probably not getting any fanfare. Because any sort of Jordan release, whether it be a current performance Jordan or anything that isn't like 1-13, to 13, there's no fanfare for them at all. You can say, oh yeah, but it's an original silhouette for Travis Scott. Take Travis Scott away from that. They're at the outlets. They'll be sitting in the outlets. You couldn't pay anyone to be interested in that shoe. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't think you can because, yeah. Apparently the idea with them is the first couple of colorways, they're going to be super limited, create a bit of that faux hype, and then... They're going to be easy to be done. But, I don't know. There's been a couple of Travis pairs that I like. But I feel like... I, I do like the fact they're doing something different. Other than Jordan 1 Lowe's. Although there's going to be about 10 dropping this year. It seems like. I just saw another one get announced today. And it looks nice, the black and brown. But I, I'm so done with Jordan 1 Lowe's with a backward swoosh. I don't even have a pair and I'm done with them. I feel like the Bread 4, the Reimagined 4, there was a lot of hype for them. They were fairly easy to get. I went in one raffle, was able to hit, and then I ended up giving them the RA to Adam. Now, when I got them in hand, I saw them, I'm like, all right, I actually do like these. I like these more than the original. 
I'm going to cop it in the comments, but I'm going to say it right now. Um, they were very comfortable too. I tried them on feet, but I feel like you just don't see people trying to resell them. You don't see people looking for them. I haven't seen that many shots on feet of late. I don't know. It just seems like they came and went. They could be like pairs on pairs. I'd say in America, they're probably sitting. I'm going to be honest. I feel like they probably are. But I feel like that one, within this, there was a lot of hype, a lot of discussion. People were like, do we prefer the new one, the old one? Why would you desecrate the old one? Everything like that. They could potentially still creep into a top 10. Top 15, maybe. But one that there was a lot of hype for, and I don't even know if it's dropped. It may have dropped, but mainly because the fanfare of his first shoe was the Action Bronson 1906. I want to say it was called Rosewater or something. And the idea was like, if you're a sneakerhead, you've looked at a pair, a women's pair and gone, yep, I really like that. I'm, I'm going to try and make it work. And that was the idea for that, you know. Me personally, I don't like the shoes, but there wasn't much variation in this between just Nike SB, Nike and Jordan. So I had to find some things, but for me, it's a little bit overhyped. I'm not really that into it. One that I kind of changed my mind about when I saw, I want to say the Chosen one, he had them on feet in Melbourne, is the Asics Gel Hidden NYC. Now, there are a lot of crazy details on this, subtle details, and for me, it just kind of looked like not much more than a GR initially, but the more I've seen them on feet, Asics Gel NYC, one of my favorite shoes from last year, I'm going to say they've probably changed my mind. Are they going to be in the top 15? It depends what else comes out this year because there's not a lot to write at home about yet. This month is going to be quite big. You've got the Military Blue 4s. You've got the Space Jam Lows dropping this weekend. There's a lot coming. I don't know. But look, from what I've seen, it feels like they're dropping multiple colors of these. But the Amanier 4s and 3s. I haven't really heard many people talking about them. Initially, when the renderings came out, not that inviting. Official images come out, not that great. It's pretty hard to top the Armanier 3, the original one, because it is the perfect sneaker. But these probably fall into the category of hype, but mm, I don't think they're going to live up to it. Similarly to the J Balvin 3 in the black colorway, some people are like, ah, oh, it's heaps better than the white. Some people are like, the white's heaps better. For me, I always feel like a white shoe is much more wearable than black, but I know people that are opposite to that. I don't really, I, I won't even try for these, but I know a lot of people have talked about them and still, I still see people talking about them to be fair, so. Another shoe that's come out this year, and I want to say that, did they come out last year or this year? I want to say last year at All-Star Weekend. But the Anthony Edwards basketball shoe, in terms of a performance basketball shoe, so we could have a bit of representation all over the place, right? These seem to be the most popular performance basketball shoe at the moment. Me personally, I don't really like them. I don't like the look of them. I've had them in hand. They're just not for me. In terms of performance basketball shoes, I want to say, I want to say the Jordan 38 looks incredible, feels incredible on feet. Haven't played them in them because I haven't bought a pair yet. I feel like I'm waiting for a sale, just like with everything this year. But I want to say the Kyrie Kai one with Anta is probably in terms, and I haven't seen these in hand, so my opinion may change. But the Kyrie Kai One is probably the best looking performance basketball shoe I've seen in a very long time. The first colorway, the artist on court, incredible. Colorways after that, not so much. If you give the people a triple black version of that, I think it goes nuts. If you do like a Space Jam type joint, it'll go crazy. Another one that's kind of been talked about is the Nocta Hot Step 2. I think this is a bit of a downgrade. I think 
In the black colorways, the Nocta Hot Step 1 looks better, but in the white colorway, it might be kind of growing on me. I'm not too sure. The whole Kendrick and Drake beef going on at the moment and some dicey words going back and forth. I'm not trying to pick a side, but yeah, they're not for me. One that just came out of nowhere and I, I feel like it is an incredible shoe and on every merit it could be in my top 15 at the end of the year, but I don't think that it will be just because it wasn't so accessible. It is the Oregon Air Max 1. I believe these were released. I think it was like a charity thing. I, one lot was released at one resale store. The other one was released on GOAT. Incredible looking shoes, similar to the Oregon Air Max 1 that they did with the NFT. Incredible looking shoe, but well out of my price point. Same with the PJ Tucker Nike 89 Flight. 89 flights are one of my favorite silhouettes. This shoe in particular, this colorway anyway, went all around Australia, touring with music, with a beat up pair of these that I got at the outlets. I did a comparison video when these came out in 2020. So you got the comparison between the older pair and this pair. Quality on these are terrible. <laughs> I must say it's like the absolute plastic leather. Please give me a good quality 89 flight. But the PJ Tucker pair is incredible. Um, just had a look today on StockX. It's gone for about 1500 bucks. I'm never going to pay that. I'm never going to pay resell. Maybe there's one pair that may change my mind. That's later on. But the PJ Tucker, man, like they were limited pairs to was it 400 something <sighs> only released in america i i cannot think of anyone that's that much more of a fan of 89 flights than me that i've ever seen i don't hear anyone talking about them i would say trem the melbourne rapper told me the release before this one he still had three pairs on ice if we were the same size i'd probably hit him up to try and buy a pair he Although they'd probably be ready to crumble at this point. Fear of God basketball shoes, I think it's called the Athletic One. I feel like there was a lot of hype building up to these, limited releases, pop-ups, everything. But when it came to a general release, no one really cared. They then did a couple of other shoes that are sitting in stores all over Melbourne. I don't know about Sydney, I haven't been down. I haven't been to Sydney in a while. I might have to go this weekend. But there was just nothing. No hype, no, none whatsoever. There was a lot of talk. I feel like personally, the athletic one is much better looking than say the original Nike Fear of God stuff. I think they are God awful. They're the worst things to ever happen to a Nike sneaker. Maybe not the worst thing, but it's up there. But the hype was so quickly dead. I don't even know if they're available think they're around about $300. I'm not going to pay that. I paid it for, I want to say, what were the, the easy, the black joints, but I knew Adam wanted them anyway. So I just gave him the RA on them, tried them on, reviewed them. He can have them. One that I'm going to throw in as like a, a, something that I'm really checking for, but I just need the right colorway is the Asics Gel Quantum 8. They just, like, from the moment the Quantums came out, they were interesting. I remember, like, first being shown them in retail, and it was like a full-length gel, and I was like, man, this is something I've been calling for for years. At that point, it was still being marketed towards your performance running. And I was saying, you know, there's chances that this could be like a casual type shoe. I feel like it falls into that category. Not that I had anything to do with it, but, you know, this is what I was talking to the rep initially when I was getting shown the Quantums. And even at that time, I was looking for a certain colorway. It got to a point where I want to say at JD Sport, I got an all black pair with like a white speckle, like a spray paint speckle. For me being a graffiti writer, that appealed to me. Plus, I think they were on special. On special always appeals to me, but feel like that first one that I got 
was very low cut. They look better with a no-show type sock. And when I do use one of them, it cut the absolute shit out of my ankle. So the only time I really wear it is if I'm wearing pants and I can wear a longer sock so you don't really see it. And to be honest, probably more so going for walks or exercising, that sort of stuff. But this V8, why am I saying V8? <laughs> it's not a car. This ASICS Gel Quantum 8, if they release like some sort of really nice quality material collab, you know, mix it up with a suede on the top, but with that dope shape and midsole, I think I, I think I just need to pull the trigger on the black and blue ones. I really do like them. I was hoping to win them at the TKS event, but not the case. But let's get into things that I feel like right now would be in my top 15. I'm not gonna like lay out a full top five or a full top 10, but I will say at this point, I will say these are gonna be in my top 15 for the end of the year. I don't remember these releasing, but when going through StockX and checking 2024, the ASICS Gel E-N-N-O-Y -E -N -N Nimbus 9. These are incredible. Um, there's not many pairs for sale. All pairs are around about 400 plus. I'm never gonna pay that. But if anyone's got a 10 and a half in them, I'll take them off your hands for sure. These are incredible. I don't really have much more details on that. I know nothing about the brand that collaborated on them. They're just really nice. Black and white, simple vibes, little bit of sale on the midsole. I need to find some sort of ASICs or something to put in my end of the year top list in the middle of the year, but they were cool. I'd also put in the Kyrie Kai One Artist on Court. Like I said, the other colorways, not that great. But that initial colorway, everything, the storytelling, the way it dropped, except for the release, incredible. The pop-ups all over, you can only get it certain ways. Just the, the fact that they sold out online instantly, whereas you see people in store being able to cop multiple pairs. People here in Australia, I myself wanted to get a pair, couldn't get them. This is what it is. But I think they deserve to be mentioned here. And maybe they probably fall down to an honorable mention by the time we get to December, but I'm gonna put them right here. The other one I will say is the Reimagine, uh, the Reimagine 4. I think they could definitely be in the top 15, maybe, maybe an honorable mention. No, we'll, we'll take that back. But the Military Blue 4s, getting that original OG colorway, the closest to an OG colorway and shape since it's ever been retroed. They're just a really good looking shoe. Now this comes down to debate again. Like, do you prefer a black shoe? Do you prefer a white shoe? I prefer a white shoe. That's why I would have them above the bread for reimagined. I think they'll be really easy to cop. I may even try and get doubles. I'm gonna be honest. I may try and get doubles. If they are as comfortable as the Bread 4s or the SB 4s in that colorway, I'm gonna try for doubles, for sure. I wanna say they drop at the end of this month too. Foot Locker's saying 27th. I know my local JD's gonna get them in store. So, plenty of opportunities. Now as it stands, in May 9th, I think it is right now. These right here would be in my top 15, maybe even top 10, maybe top five, I don't know. I just really like the sale, the neutral tones, everything about this shoe, I've got doubles. It doesn't hurt the fact that I've got these for 170 something at the outlets. No, not the outlets, the Nike employee store. That does not hurt the rankings. Incredible shoe. I really like the look of it. Pretty hard to find. Like online, I don't think you can get it. I've been hearing that you can get it at Pitt Street Mall still in a couple of sizes. I know in Melbourne they were still available at the Jordan store. But, and I think in America, from what I've been hearing in America, they're still sitting. But, you know, 
They call them the poor man's Armagnier 3. For me, I really like these. I think they'll be in my top 10. Same with these. Pretty hard to go past those materials. The details, like, if you can still get these at your local skate store, get them. My local Fast Times is not at a shopping center I go to very regularly. So, for me to go there, it's a specific trip. Unlike all the other stores I go to. But, if I find myself down there, and I got another pair in my size, let's believe I'm doubling up on this. This, as it stands right now, probably top five. Probably top five for mine. The fact that they're sitting is insane. Like, look at even the cracking on the swoosh. Reflective silvery bits there, the rope laces, different materials there. Is that a, is that a hemp or a hessian sack type thing? The ribbing on the tongue. Imagine like right now, these dropped, no fanfare. And then Nike just came out and said, joke's on you, this was actually a secret collab with Travis Scott or whoever. And the whole big money savings is the fact that you're able to get them quite easily because no one knew it was a collab. Maybe this wears away and there's like some brand. That'd be crazy if they did something like that. I've always thought about that. Whether or not within the company, within whatever, if they could keep the secret, I don't know. But... For me, these are definitely being the top five, the big money SB Dunks. Now, one that I was on the fence on, when they said initially that they were coming out, I thought, though, if they do it exactly like the same sort of iteration as the last one, I'm in. It's the bread toe reimagined Jordan 1s. Jordan 1s, no one seems to care for, they're all, like even, uh, the latte one which is basically like a mocha in better materials but a lighter brown sitting i can get it right now it hasn't even come out in america yet so there's an opportunity for the resellers and everything to sell to america early but they're still sitting jordan ones are absolutely dead within the resale market so for people like us who just want to buy jordan ones perfect absolutely perfect but this one here will test that. We all know the chaos that was the Jordan one. Reimagined, lost and found. I still ain't got a pair, bro. I still ain't got a pair. I was looking at my equal run fair account and it was showing all the pairs that I won. And don't get me wrong, I've won some decent pairs on, on the equal platform. But there was about 20 different raffles for the lost and founds that I did not win. Insane. Absolutely insane. If anyone's got a pair of 10s, hit me up. I'm only going to pay retail though. So, maybe we'll do a trade. I don't know. But then they said that it was going to come out with the text instead of the Wings logo. And automatically everyone was like, no, nope, don't like it. Don't want it. No, nope, kill it with fire. But then, literally, the last day or two, there's some sort of like imprinted Michael Jordan signature either on the inside or the outside and those little extra details start kicking in and you would be like mm, yes I'm probably gonna need them me personally I'm gonna need them I think they'll be in my top 10 will they be easier to cop than the lost and founds I think so but I still think there will be some resell attention on them, so you will have to go into every single raffle. Line up if you have to, whatever you need to do to get it done. Now, this shoe, from the moment I saw first images, I said, it's a pretty bold statement. Very rarely this happens. Usually it takes a little bit of wearing on me or you know, seeing the impact and bits and pieces, but I said this shoe will be sneaker of the year. And I am yet to change my opinion. I think it's about to drop in the States because 
early pairs are getting around and everything. I do know someone in the States that was actually able to get a pair early through a homie that owns a skate shop. It's the future of dunks. These are incredible. Say what you want about the original Flom dunks and everything, all the Futura collabs and everything like that. Me, I'm a huge fan of Futura 2000. From Star Wars to his little cameo in Mark Echo's Getting Up, Contents Under Pressure, who remembers that? Meeting him was dope, in game, not real life, obviously. But this shoe is incredible. The color, perfect. The laces, too, tonal, like fades down, something I've never really seen before. It might have been done, it probably has been done. I really like it. The one thing that's a little bit disheartening is, like I said, I know someone in the States that's got them in hand. He said he wore them for a couple of minutes and that's what happened. That's a really bad crease. He said, I said, I think I'm probably going to have to pay resale fees. It is the first shoe ever where I've considered I feel like I need to pay resale for these. I, I may do it. I may. I may not as well, but like, I want these so bad that I'm will that I was thinking about being willing <laughs> to pay resale until he told me this really bad quality materials creases quite easily. I'm a person that wears my shoes. This is creased heat. It's a play on words of wear your shoes, people. But I don't know. I feel like it's pretty hard to take these out of the top 10. Maybe he just had a bad pair. I don't know. These are going to be extremely limited too. Like extremely limited. I, I want to say it was like 40,000 pairs total. Where some regions will get 40,000 pairs. Obviously not Australia. We don't get anything. But from what I hear, they'll be released at Supply. And maybe one other spot. I would probably presume fast times and I wouldn't be surprised if it was online only and not an in-store raffle because there are such limited pairs but you never know we'll see for me I want that shoe no matter what that is a work of art that is chef's kiss for me I still feel like regardless of the toe box being terrible quality that sneaker of the year for me but what do you guys think What's on your list? What are you checking for? What have you picked up? What do you feel like if you're saying right now of what you know has come out, what is coming out, what would you say is your top five? Leave it in the comments and let's debate it. But this has been another episode of Crease Teeth. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. We'll be back twice a week. Peace. the end of the year but I'm gonna do like a mid mid-year list the fuck am I even talking about